And it's not hard to see looking around, we have some army soldiers represented as well. And I know we're such a small elite fighting force in a crowd like this. We might be small in numbers, but can I hear from the Marines here today? Thank you, thank you. <laughs> well, as I said, the outpouring of support for this event, for making it possible, has just been overwhelming. And I'm not here to speechify myself or to listen to myself talk. Uh, the message of this event is simple. Ron Paul is the choice of the troops. And one thing I want you to keep in mind here today, as much fun as we can have, as much community as we can build, as much of a message as we can send, it won't matter if the Republican Party will not listen to the troops. That is the mission. No one lose sight of that. We are here to make sure that Ron Paul is the next Commander-in-Chief of the United States Armed Forces. And it really shouldn't be that hard. This is what I've been saying, and I don't claim to speak for the troops. In fact, in putting this event together, Nathan Cox and I have made it clear because there is no such organization, Veterans for Ron Paul. There is a Facebook page. There is no hierarchy, there is no organization. And what that means is that it's something that all of you can take and run with and claim and make your own and be present and be a part of the national dialogue as a veteran for Ron Paul. This event is simply by the invitation of, of Nate and myself, but what I've been saying is that it shouldn't be hard to understand that if you're willing to put your life on the line for this country, you want a commander in chief who's gonna be decisive. And with Ron Paul, when he gets asked the questions about foreign policy, he knows the answers before the questions are asked. He is decisive beyond a doubt. The second thing we want is a commander in chief who's going to put America's security first. Not Israel's, not Iraq's, not Afghanistan's, not trying to police the world, but when we sign up to risk our lives, we do it to defend our fellow Americans. And the third thing that we want in our Commander-in-Chief is someone who is only going to send us into harm's way with a clear mission, with a declaration of war, as he would call it, with a clear moral imperative so we can go kill people and blow shit up and win wars like we were trained to. So I hope it's not presumptuous of me to say that there are a few veterans and active duty soldiers that share my sentiments on those points, but I'm really gonna leave it at that. I have a few words for the president later. Um, my name is Lauren Colbreth. I'm from Alexandria, Virginia. Uh, I was a 2001 Naval Academy graduate and former nuclear submarine officer. And, uh, and you know, I've known some people who've come back from the war who were injured. I've also known folks who didn't come back uh, from foreign wars. And I was inspired to come out here because since 2007, I, I've realized that Ron Paul is the ideal candidate for the United States president. What was it like just emotionally, physically standing in formation today? 
Uh, it was uh, it was interesting because I, you know I've been out of the military for about six years, and uh, you know I just kind of felt the conditioning come back to me. But it was also very uh, very inspiring just to see all these people standing there, and and you know just to to look ahead of me when we were marching in formation and see the troops for Ron Paul flag. You know I don't want to say I teared up, <laughs> but uh, but it felt good. It was a good feeling. Well, I'm Victoria Bingham. I live in Alexandria, Virginia. I'm from New York City, but I came here on active duty in 1994. And being here serving in the military changed my worldview. But really, only in the last couple of years did I start with the recession being motivated to study economics, to understand what's going on around me that I just don't get. And sooner or later, the, all the roads lead to Ron Paul because he explains the things that I'm learning that impact our economy adversely, he's the man that's talking about changing those things. Uh, the number one at the top of the list, of course, would be eliminating the Federal Reserve. Mm -hmm. uh, tell me a little bit, let's just go back to the event. Uh, you, you were in line with, with the, the members? Too. I was. I served as a squad leader. What was that like, uh, both physically and emotionally? Oh, it was thrilling. <laughs> it was thrilling to be a squad leader because I have, I got off active duty over 15 years ago, but um, it brought it all back. It brought back the motivation to serve to begin with. Um, there's a reason people go into the Army. There's many reasons, but for me, of course, it was, I love the country. I love the country. Constitution. I swore twice to uphold the Constitution and defend it against all comers, internal, external, and that's what this is really about. So for them to ask me to be a squad leader, it was a thrill. Tell me a little bit about your message. I heard you speaking and I was interested in, in hearing what, what you said. To tell our listeners a little bit of what you said about, you know, you said, you know, this is a savvy crowd, but uh, this, this fact about, the, about 1913 and, and the, the funding. Well, that's a very important point, actually, and uh, this is a very savvy crowd. These people are here supporting Ron Paul because they understand that he's the candidate that really intends to bring us back to a constitutional republic, which we haven't been for a great many years. People have pointed out that the Supreme Court hasn't ruled anything on constitutional that was passed on the Hill between the years of 1935 and 1995. And that should already call our attention to the fact that laws are being passed, but they're not being judged based on the Constitution. And Ron Paul is the one man that really wants to bring us back to that. For example, the Federal Reserve that was implemented in 1913 has radically changed the United States, the way we do business, our civil rights, um, the formation of money. It was taken away from Congress. It should be constitutionally the right of Congress to print and make and coin money. And it was given to a um, private industry, as, you, as it were, um, with private interests that are not representing the interests of the American people. And essentially what happened in 1913, if we look back, was in short order we had World War I, then World War II, then the Korean War, then the Cold War, then Vietnam, and the list goes on and on. And we've been able to finance the greatest size wars on earth because of essentially the Federal Reserve being able to just print the money they need for each and every conflict, whether or not they were constitutional or not. And we've been doing that now with Iraq, Afghanistan, and the drums are beating for Iran. Iran has not attacked us. There's no reason on earth for us to be going after this little country that has no navy, that has a lot of rhetoric, that talks about hating us, but you know something? You can't attack someone because they hate you. And if we don't deserve it or do deserve it is besides the point. But Ron Paul is the one person that is talking and the military hears him about pulling back on all the unnecessary activities and making sure they're constitutional. Click here to donate to support efforts to elect Ron Paul to the White House.